When it comes to Beautiful Disaster, it may appear to be another strange, bad boy with potential story, but it is far better than a lot of the movies you probably want to quickly compare it to. To summarize the film, with how life was back in Vegas, Abby wanted something far more simpler. So when it came to going to college in Sacramento, she wanted to just hang out with her best friend named America, eventually move on from being a third wheel between America and her boyfriend Shepley, and you know, get with a guy like Parker who's normal, tame, and stable. However, then a guy named Travis comes into her life, and being that Abby feels that Travis reminds her of her father a little bit, especially in terms of being a bad boy and potentially unreliable, she doesn't want to be with him. Yet as time goes on, she finds him so she finds herself getting more and more attracted to him and realizing that unlike her father Mick, this might be a guy worth giving a chance. And even a second chance too as things go on. So things to note in terms of why this film is rated R, there is cursing throughout. There are multiple fight scenes featuring Travis. And of course, there's drinking, gambling, and smoking. But what some people may find most notable is that there's simulated sex scenes, which don't have a whole lot of nudity, but you will see Dylan Sprouse's bear behind, and there's a implied nudity when it comes to Abby. Get into the highlights. <laughs> the first highlight is Dylan Sprouse's charm, and while we're not in the age of what hot fobs used to be when it comes to media and entertainment, I would submit that Dylan Sprouse fits the bill for it. For whether he's a jerk, a lover boy, or anything on the spectrum between being an ass to being a perfect guy, Sprouse knows how to play that role when it comes to Travis and Abby's relationship. And even at his worst, you can still see that there's enough room for him to bounce back like nothing happened and you clearly are on the palm of his hand. I would also add that the man is very much funny, and he makes a good lead because whether he is playing off of Abby, her friends, or even his potential adversaries, he knows how to both command the room without suffocating everyone in it. And because of that, you see him as an actor who knows how to interact with another person, let them shine, and also help keep the pacing of the film going. Which, of course, also has to be credited to the writer of the screenplay, Roger Cumble. Cumble? and also Jamie McGuire. So the next highlight for us is the chemistry between Sp Dylan Sprouse and also Virginia Gardner. Now, we already talked about Sprouse's charming abilities and how he is an excellent romantic lead, but you can't discount him having a scene partner that works as well as Virginia Gardner. Now, as on, on the fence section, some of Abby's di dialogue is very cringy and she uses feminist language in a way that can come off a little bit toxic, especially towards men. But enough is established when it comes to Abby where you get it. Because of her relationship with Mick and all that he did to her throughout her childhood, she has every right to be protective of her heart. Never mind to trash and have a negative perception of men based off of the example he set. So when it comes to Travis coming off like a bad boy whose confidence teeters toward being arrogant and who may have consensual sex with a bunch of women, but you know, at the same time he appears like a whore, there is more than enough to understand why she thinks Travis is the epitome of an anti-feminist or, or someone who uses feminist ideals and thought in order to exploit women to the best of his abilities. But. As she starts to realize that guys like Parker are a little bit too dull and Travis, as much as he can be a bad boy and a little bit crazy, well, better word be eccentric, he's still somebody that knows how to have fun, knows how to be stimulating, and with that, it makes you glad that similar to the After franchise, you know that this is gonna have a sequel since you wanna see more of these two interact and us. Not only interact, but also watch them grow together. The last highlight when it comes to this film is that there aren't a lot of fight scenes with Travis, either in or out of the ring, but when it comes to Roger Cumble and the members of the sound department, they know how to execute a fight scene. From the sound of hits, how movement is handled to show both Travis's talent and the power behind his fists, kicks and throws, it seems like Sprouse was a top tier choice for all aspects of this, and it really makes me hope, again, 
just as much as you want to see more of Travis and Abby together, I hope we get to see Travis whoop some more ass in the sequel that I think has already been greenlit. Greenlit, rather. So the on offense topic deals with Abby and a lot of the talking points that she uses when she first meets Travis. And I want to be very clear. I have nothing against woke language, culture, feminist talk points and all that. But at the same time, I feel like with a lot of movies, <laughs> they use people talking like that in order to be divisive and not educational or else really give us a sense of who that person is. It's more so used almost as a defense mechanism because that's what someone else said and it sounded really intelligent or it made more sense than what they truly feel, so they use it kind of like a crutch. And in Abby's case, it feels like a crutch. She paints with a broad stroke how terrible Travis and men like him are and uses every opportunity to make him seem like an entitled misogynist. And the way she paints this picture seems so shallow that you can't help but roll your eyes at minimum. But as noted in the highlights, though I may not have said it as good as I should have in this video review, Travis eventually forces Abby to see him as a human being, as an individual, and yes, he is someone who's flawed and silly does and say things that live up to a lot of her expectations, but at a certain point, you can see that Abby evolves beyond the perceptions that deal with her having a bad experience with her father and realize her father's an individual just as much as Travis is, and while it's not wrong to have some precautions when it comes to men in your heart. At the same time, there comes a point where you have to realize certain people, as much as they may fit some stereotypes or negative perceptions, that doesn't mean they can't evolve. That doesn't mean that's the sum of who they are. And to sum up this whole topic, if you are somebody that thinks woke, quote unquote language is annoying and frustrating to the point that you can't enjoy something if it uses that, the beginning of this film is gonna really test you with watching the rest of it. Overall, when it comes to Beautiful Disaster, what it does is show that Dylan Sprouse is one of the top talents of his generation, particularly as a leading man, and that even for something like this film, which absolutely is not made for everybody, he can bring a certain universal commercial value to it so that even if it's not for everybody, it can still be something you can imagine as a hit, especially with the audiences going after.